Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a, a Bob car test in Excel. Um, it's actually done uh, almost fully uh, manually because there's no shortcut in Excel to actually do this. So, um, I have here some data. Uh, I filled out something on beneath just to help in all the steps, but this is the only data that I've entered and I'm going to be entering all formulas for you. The first thing we need are the totals. So ALT equals is a nice shortcut for that. So the row totals for my three rows and the column total ALT equal again and CTRL C and I can do this also for the grand total. The first real step is to convert everything to percentages which means I take this 20 and divide it by the grand total of 128 and I want them all to be divided by 128, so press F4 to add the dollar signs. I can then copy paste and add the totals again. And then we're done with the first step, which probably is one of the easiest ones. The second step is also not so big of a deal. Uh, we need to actually see if uh, this row total uh, and get it with the difference. Oh, and get the difference between this row total and this column total, this row total and this column total, this one and that one. So that can easily be done. That's simply this one uh, minus uh, this one is and this one minus that one. And actually, because we have one degrees of freedom, we don't need to fill out the last one. Uh, two is enough. Then the biggest step of them all is to calculate the variance and covariance matrix. Now, this means that we need, on the diagonal, uh, add the row and column total of that cell. So for this one, the AA, we say it's the row and column total that we need to add, which was, this is the row total plus the column total. Subtract twice the cell count. All right, so we do minus two times the actual cell count or actually cell proportion that should be that's this one okay and then subtract twice and then subtract twi uh, the square difference between the row and column total so those two values again that we also used here but now actually so control c minus and then between parentheses but it's not the addition now, it's the subtraction, so minus, and then use squared. And that gives us the first value. For this one, the same thing. So we actually add for BB, we add the row total of B plus the column total of B, and then we subtract twice the cell count, which was this one, and we subtract the difference between the row total and the column total squared. So it looks like uh, this in the end. Now, again, we don't need to be concerned with the third one because uh, we have one degree of freedom. Now, for anything that's not on a diagonal, it becomes slightly more complex. Uh, at the mirrored cell, so what we want is the cell itself, which is this one, and it's mirror. So this is row 1, column 2, and then we flip that around to get column 1, row 2. So this is its mirror. Okay. Uh, and then add a minus sign, and what's meant there is actually to say minus. So this whole thing becomes negative. Alright, then subtract the product of the difference of the row total of the current cell and the column total of the mirrored cell. So, minus, and then the difference of the row total of the current cell. The row total of the current cell is this one. And its difference with the column total of the mirrored cell, and this was the mirrored cell, and this is its column total. And it's a product, so times something, and let's see, times what? Uh, with the difference of the row total of the mirrored cell and the column total of the current cell. 
So the same thing, but then actually the other way around. The row total of the mirrored cell. This is the mirrored cell, so this is its row total minus the column total of the original cell. And then we can press enter and we actually have the value. Here we can do the same, uh, but because it's uh, the calculations are actually symmetric, we can simply say that this one will be the same value as that one. Finally, we can determine the inverse matrix of S. So this is our S and we need the inverse matrix. So I select the same amount of cells and then start typing equals M inverse, which simply returns the inverse of a matrix. Select the array. And then this is quite important. Press Ctrl, Shift and then Enter because this is an array function. We also want to transpose the differences, so select the two cells and then say equals transpose and my D was up here, select those two and again because this is an array function, control, shift and then enter. Alright, and then finally we can start calculating the chi-square value. We need to first, m this is its formula in the end and we actually first need to multiply n with that uh, just now transpose d. So we select two of them again equals m mult which stands for matrix multiplication and the first one is simply the total count that's this one semicolon or comma depending on your system settings and then I select the inverse uh, of the d which was this one, and then again control shift enter. Then we need to multiply this result with that inverse matrix, so we select both of them again, equals m mult, and we say in these two, semicolon, select all these four, and again control shift enter. And last but not least, this now needs to mul be multiplied with the original uh, differences. So equals m mult again. And we select these two that we're left with. And they need to be multiplied uh, with the original d, which was only these two. And we can simply hit enter now because it's no longer an array. And finally we have our chi-square value. The degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus 1 or the number of columns minus 1. In this case I had A, B and C, so that's actually 3 rows and 3 columns. Minus 1 is 2. And to finally determine the significance, what we can do first is, is the chi-square uh, dist. Oh, chi-square or chi-dist, that's the oldest one. It asks for the chi-square value and the degrees of freedom and it immediately returns to me the significance. What you can also do is there are a few other ones equals chi-square uh, dot dist and if you then enter x again and the degrees of freedom and you want it to be set to true you get it a slightly too high, so you need to do the one minus uh, this one. As you might notice here on the left, you see those same results coming back. Uh, this is actually uh, Bob Carr is a special um, user-defined function I created. If you're interested in using that instead of doing all these calculations, simply download uh, the spreadsheet in the description of the video below, and then you can simply just select the original data. Uh, excluding the totals, uh, select uh, a 1 if you want to see the chi-square value, select a 2 if you want to see the degrees of freedom, and anything else, for example 0 or 3, will return then the significance. Alright, that was it.